the Baroque violin um, is basically the way the violins were made until 1800. Um, even the concert instruments played in, uh, in symphonies now, if they're that old, they were set up more like this when they were new and since modified. The necks are a little shorter, they're a little thicker, the fingerboards are shorter, the string angle is a little less over the bridge, and they used uh, gut strings like this. Uh, no chin rest, no shoulder rest. Um, so the playing technique was a bit different. And they would use an old style bow, um, which was more outwardly curved, shorter and lighter. And uh, it changed the, the playing technique and the style the instrument was, uh, was played in. And of course the tone of the instrument was uh, lesser string tensions, a little lighter, um, a little thinner sounding. And in the 19th century, music's, musical demands required um, upgrading the instruments for more tension and therefore more power and extending the upper range with a longer fingerboard. So um, the famous Strads, Guanaris, Amadis that are played in concert halls today have all had these modern modifications made. This is actually after Amadi. This, uh, this violin that I made is on uh, Nicholas Amadi pattern. Um, but I uh, incorporated the original style, shorter neck, shorter fingerboard, and uh, gut strings. So its tone is a little lighter and more delicate sounding, um, wouldn't be as appropriate for, you know, Brahms and, and Beethoven, but, uh, you know, is, uh, helps give the, the proper color and the, the lighter sound that you'd expect for Vivaldi and Bach and music of that period, so. This is a viola de more. This is an instrument that's also from that Baroque period, but um, it's actually a different instrument, more of a hybrid between the violin family instrument and the viola de gamba family instrument. Um, and it has these extra sympathetic strings that run underneath the fingerboard that add some resonance to it. So it's um, um, a little more silvery sound and uh, has the extra strings for extra range and uh, uh, tuned more in a chord. So you can retune the instrument and play in various keys and still continue to, to, uh, to uh, play open string chords and, and such that uh, a gamba might. Even before I started uh, making instruments, uh, the music I loved to play would be mostly Baroque, instrument, uh, Baroque music, uh, Vivaldi and Bach and Handel. And uh, so I think that they came together essentially. Um, and when I started hearing um, this music played on period style instruments uh, and that wasn't until the late 70s I think that um, it became more popular and you started to hear more and more of it um, where I could actually s hear these instruments played. Before that it was a visual attraction that had me uh, interested so it was nice to put them together. You see it has no end pin, has frets like a guitar, is uh, flat like a guitar, I see I have some rosin on the top and these are the bows. They have a reverse arc, goes this way, like the violin bow. And they're played underhand. You bring them up to the string, and you sort of set the string going with a pluck, and then you glide. And these were replaced human voice in a lot in groups, and so they put uh, heads on them to make them look like they were singing people. This, this, head, is, uh, this head is Athena, and she's uh, wearing a helmet.